Okay, this is the last lesson in unit number one. So this is day three, um, the first lesson in day three, and there's only one lesson in day three. Tomorrow morning, you are going to have a quiz or a test. So in this first unit, you should have had an activity, you should have had a quiz so far, and you're gonna get a test. What we're doing right now is projectile motion, which means that we have an initial force on an object, so on a cannonball, and then the only force after that that's exerting anything on it is gravity. So we usually get a parabolic motion, something like this. Now, the first thing that we have to do when we shoot something off at an angle, so we're shooting a cannonball at 20 meters per second, so I'll just draw a cannonball up there so we can see it's the cannonball traveling, is we have to divide that up into Vy and Vx. So without calculus, we can't calculate this on the parabolic, we can only calculate the Y direction movement of the cannonball and the X, so we have to split those two up. So to get the Y, velocity, we take 45 degrees, we take the sine of that and multiply it by the velocity of the cannonball as it's coming out the cannon. So it's sine of 45 times 20, which is going to be about 14 meters per second, because the sine of 45 is going to be uh, 0.707. Now, the cos of 45 coincidentally is also going to be 0 0.707 times 20 meters per second. So this cannonball is traveling about 14 meters per second upwards and across. The only formula that we can use in this direction is V equals D over T. It's very important that you segment formulas here. So if we wanted to find the distance that this cannonball traveled, rearranging this formula, it'll be V times T. And that will tell us how far it goes in this direction. If we want to um, find anything else in the Y direction, we can use any one of these. This is often called the toolbox in physics. It's all of the formulas that we can use in the Y um, component, so going up and down. These ones, most of them have acceleration in them, which the acceleration is due to gravity, so that acceleration is usually gonna be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. In this particular type of um, uh, calculation where we're shooting something out of a cannon, and we're gonna have two types of calculations, our VF is gonna be zero, because going upwards um, at the top in the y direction, our VF is zero. Now I'm gonna backtrack for a minute. I'm gonna explain something. In the x direction, no matter where we are going in this direction, our velocity is always 14 meters per second. So you have to be able to split your brain up into y directions and x directions. So if somebody threw a baseball through the air, it's always going at the same velocity in the X direction until it lands. Now you might be thinking, I've thrown a ball into the wind before, and that's not true. It slows down as it goes. We're negating any effect of wind um, resistance here. So it's very important that you note that we're negating wind resistance. So in a perfect world, if you threw something in the X direction, the um, velocity would be constant. In the y direction, as it goes up, it slows down to zero, and then it comes back down to that original 14 meters per second right before it hits the Earth. So the VF is the velocity at the top, which is going to be zero. The VI is going to be our initial velocity going up. The D, in this case, is going to be the distance going upwards, okay? So that's our D value right there. So we've got some data. Let's see what we can figure out here. What I wanna know in this case, I guess, is how high my, um, how high that my object traveled as we went up. Is that what I wanna find first? Uh, no, let's find time first. We'll go VF equals VI plus AT, and we'll get the time. 
We know our velocity final when it gets to the top is zero. We know our vo velocity initial in the y direction is 14. We know that our acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8. So if we rearrange this, we'll pull the 14 over to the other side and we'll divide by 9.8 and we will get a time. That time is 1.4 seconds. This is a very important part of the video because what you have to realize is that 1.4 seconds is the time that it takes to get to the top. You must multiply that by two to find the time for the total trip because it comes back down. So it's 2.8 seconds for the total trip, 1.4 up, 1.4 down. Here's another important point about time. So the first important point is the time is the way up we double it to get the total time, and time is the only thing that we can take from these calculations here, which are y calculations, and we can put it over here. Because time is scalar, meaning it has no direction, we can use time in our x calculations and our y calculations. So these are y calculations and these are x calculations. So if we wanted to know how far this projectile went, it would be 14.8 times, sorry, it'd be 14 times 2.8 equals 39.2. That's our distance in the x direction. Remember that this calculation is for the x direction. So this projectile went 39.2 meters. Now, if we wanted to know how high it went, that would be this D value right here. So we've got a few calculations here that we can use to find D. We can use any number of calculations here to find this. Um, we could use this one, this one, and this one, and they're all gonna give us the same answer. I'm gonna use this second calculation right here to find out how high this went. So I'm gonna go delta D equals VFT minus half AT squared. The reason I wanna use this one is I'm lazy. Your velocity final at the very top of the flight is zero. Zero times T, we can get rid of that. So now we're left with negative, negative 9.8 times times squared. So don't forget, we've got to do 1.4 squared here, not the 2.8, because we're looking at the time and distance to the top. So we have to use that 1.4, because that 1.4 seconds is the time it took from to get from here up to the top. I'm just going to do that calculation. So I'm getting 19.2 meters. You should be able to use any one of these formulas here because they have D in them. This is actually delta D and they're vectors, meaning that we have to be able to give a direction on here. So that could be up, it could be positive, it could be whatever you wanna call it, but you have gotta give it a direction. Folks, I try to talk in as much detail as doing projectile problems. There will either be a simple projectile problem or there will be a problem off the quiz or off a cliff on the next quiz. Now, when you're going off of a cliff, what you have to see is that your delta D is negative because you're going down. So let's try the same type of problem here in that we're shooting off of a cannon, but we're going off of a cliff. So we know that we have 14 meters per second um, because we're starting off the same way.
same angle and same starting velocity coming out of the cannon. But now what we want to do is we want to look at something coming off of a cliff so we know that we have a D that's already given. So let's try and find um, T in this problem. Um, actually, let's get, hmm, where should we start here? There's many different things we can find. I guess we can find our, we've got our distance, we've got our acceleration, we've got our VI, we can find our VF at the bottom of the cliff coming down. So what we're going to do is we're going to find our VF right before we hit the ground. So let's use this formula here. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. So VF is going to be equal to the square root of VI squared plus 2AD. We're going to have 14 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 10. Now, some people say, well, you're not getting the distance of the cannonball when it's way up here. You're only getting this distance here. But remember what delta D means. Delta D means the distance between where you started and where you ended. Anything else does not matter. We started the cannonball here at 10 meters up. We finished it at 10 meters down. It doesn't matter if it goes way up in the air and then comes down. Delta D is the beginning to the end. That's going to be key when you're doing your problems. So if I do this calculation, I've got bear with me for one minute folks. I have a final velocity of 19.7 meters per second in the y direction. Remember, as this goes along in the x direction, it's always going 14 meters per second. As it's going down, it starts at positive 14 meters per second going up, and it ends at negative 19.8 meters per Per second, 19.8 meters per second in the y direction coming down. Now that we know this, we could ask a question about how much time it took. So we can have a formula that has time, and once again, we can use any formula that has time to answer this. I'm going to use VF equals VI plus AT. VF is negative 19.8, VI is positive 14, um, plus negative 9.8 T. So negative 19.8, I'm going to bring the 14 over, so that's going to be minus 14. That's 33.8. divided by 9.8. My time for the entire trip is 3.4 seconds. Folks, I highly suggest you watch this video a couple of times to get the hang of doing these problems. You have um, this afternoon and you have until tomorrow before you do this test. Once again, I am giving suggested timing right now. Right now we are on the third day of the course in suggested timing. It's the morning of the third day. We are going to have a test tomorrow if you are ready for it. Um, remember, this is an open book test and it's going to relate back a lot to the notes that I made. Um, some of the higher end questions are going to extend you just a little further than this. Make sure you go through the course content. And if you're not understanding things, 
take the titles of what we're doing and look at Khan Academy videos.